Hi, my name is Sam Su. I teach ultrasound at the University of Maryland Department of Emergency Medicine, and this lecture is uh, on ultrasound guided vascular access. This lecture is meant for beginners, but I am going to assume that you know your way around a machine, how to operate the probe and the knobs. So we're going to start by talking about the two different approaches, the transverse and longitudinal approach uh, to ultrasound guided access. And then I'm going to talk about peripheral access and then central access. There's two different ways you can orient the probe in relation to the vein, either transverse to it or longitudinal, and they both have their advantages and disadvantages that I'm going to go over. This is a movie clip of a longitudinal approach, and what we're looking at is a gel phantom, so it's a very nice, clean picture, easy to interpret, of uh, a vein and a needle that we see in longitudinal going right down into the vein. This looks very intuitive and seems very easy to do. And uh, it seems to make sense, and it seems like the way you would want to do this, and the other advantage is that you don't have to move the probe. Unfortunately, it does have the disadvantage that it has poor lateral orientation. And what I mean by that is if the needle is moving to the side of the vessel, it's not necessarily going to appear uh, as though it was going to miss the vessel. It'll look on screen as though it's heading directly towards the vessel. The other problem with this approach is that when you're doing peripheral veins, those veins can be quite tortuous and it may simply be impossible to image it in longitudinal. Uh, as a result, long, the longitudinal approach has a very high failure rate with peripheral veins. This uh, graphic here sort of illustrates the reason why. So on the left side of the screen, we see what would appear on the ultrasound monitor. And on the right side of the screen, I have a model of a probe with a needle uh, and the uh, vein. So if all goes well, you insert the needle and you track it on screen until it enters into the blood vessel. Let's look at the uh, vein and the probe on its side. So we're looking at everything in cross section. And what we see is that the beam of the ultrasound is not perfectly thin or flat. It has a thickness and a curvature. Now if everything is lined up perfectly, everything worked great. We see the needle track into through the tissue into the blood vessel. Unfortunately, if the beam is a little bit off-center, not lined up properly with the vein, and the needle is not lined up perfectly with the vein either, on screen, for a while at least, it's going to look like it's heading towards the blood vessel until it falls out of plane, and then you stop seeing movement of the needle. This is an actual image here of what looks like a needle heading towards the vein in longitudinal on the left side of the screen. On the right side, you see that the needle tip is actually already off to the side of the vein. And you can't tell that when you're in longitudinal. Now, if you sweep the beam over to the side trying to look for the needle, you end up losing the vein, and uh, then you get very frustrated. Now, if you have a very large blood vessel, such as a central vein, you can maybe get away with this. By contrast, this is the transverse approach. And what we're looking at is the vein in cross-section, and we're also looking at the needle in cross-section. It doesn't look as intuitive as the longitudinal approach, but it's still not that hard to understand. We follow that needle down through the tissue into the vein. And if that needle is going to pass the side of the vein, we're going to know about it because it has better, better lateral orientation. And as a result, there's a higher success rate with small veins. Now, the downside to the transverse approach is you have to move the probe in order to track the needle tip. And it's very easy to lose sight of the needle tip. So again, we're back to our models, and we're looking at the probe on its side, and so we see the beam as a thin line. I just represented it that way for uh, ease of uh, viewing. And uh, if all goes well, we're going to move the probe uh, as we move the needle and track it as it goes down into the blood vessel. Now, the rookie mistake people make is they put the probe down and then put the needle in, and they don't move the probe. And on screen, you don't see a whole lot happening because, of course, you're looking at the wrong part of the needle. You won't make that mistake for too long.
The second most common mistake people make is they do move the probe, but they don't move it enough and they don't keep up with the tip of the needle. So you're looking at the shaft and needle, which looks like it's going directly into the blood vessel, but the tip is actually past the far wall of the blood vessel. Now, how do you prevent this from happening to you? You do what I call the chase the probe method. And this is where you move the probe ahead of the needle. It's going to disappear from screen, and then you chase it with the pr uh, needle. So again, you move the probe, it disappears, and then you chase it with the needle. And you know you've caught up when it reappears on screen. And you do this stepwise until you see that needle go into the blood vessel. Now what you have to remember is that if you can see the needle on screen, you should not move the needle. Because then you're doing the getting behind the probe method, which doesn't work so well. This is what chase the probe looks like uh, in the gel model. You can see the needle appear and disappear stepwise as it gets closer and closer to the blood vessel. So once you get good at this, you can move them almost continuously and make it look nice and smooth. Now this is with an idealized blood vessel. Unfortunately, a lot of blood vessels are not straight uh, with uniform caliber. They're more ugly looking like this. So you look at the vein on ultrasound and you decide, well, okay, this is where I want to go in this section where it's relatively big and superficial. So you put down your needle and uh, off you go. And everything looks good for a while until uh, uh, that blood vessel ran away from you and got smaller. So the moral of this story is that wherever you're looking at the vein is not where you're going to hit it. You have to actually back up from that point and allow for the distance it's going to take to get to that depth. So don't worry about what the blood vessel looks like at the point you put the needle down because by the time the needle gets down to the depth of the blood vessel it's going to look like the uh, spot where you want to hit it. Now how much do you have to back up the needle to do this properly? In real practice you sort of guesstimate but if you're not comfortable with that there is a scientific way of doing this. So if you see that the blood vessel is two centimeters deep you're going to back up two centimeters. And if you put the needle down at a 45 degree angle, it's going to get you exactly to where you want to be. Like I said, in practice, you're going to just estimate this with experience. It's not that hard. Most blood vessels you're going to want to shoot for are going to be between one and two centimeters deep. So you're going to back it up roughly one or two centimeters. So in summary, the longitudinal approach may be preferred for central veins because it's easier. You don't have to move the probe. The target vein is large, so if you're a little bit uh, off-center, it's okay. You get away with that. But transverse approach is pretty much the only way that you're going to succeed with peripheral veins because the target vein is small, and you really need to know if the, vein, or if the needle is falling off the side of the vein. All right, let's talk about peripheral access specifically. These are the veins you're going to look for, the basilic vein, the brachial vein, and the cephalic vein. This is what they look like in cross-section. The basilic vein is your main target. It's uh, medial, it's fairly superficial, and uh, quite large. The brachial veins, by contrast, are deeper. They run with the artery, uh, and they're smaller. They're often paired as well. Now, the cephalic vein is on the lateral aspect of the arm. It's sometimes uh, not there and when it's there it's small and can be very hard to find. So let's focus on the medial part of the arm. This is the brachial artery, brachial veins, and the basilic vein all together in one shot. You'll find that the brachials uh, are just deep to the uh, medial edge of the biceps muscle. Now how do you tell veins apart from the artery? Well you just press with the probe and the one that stays open is the one you don't want to cannulate. Now it's very easy to compress the veins and it's extremely difficult to compress the artery. So don't worry about making a mistake when you do this and misidentifying the artery for a vein. You're going to need a long catheter and I'm going to talk about that more in detail. You're going to need your tourniquet, your skin prep, sterile gel, a tegaderm, and some gauze. Now make sure you find a long catheter. They do stock these. Uh, they are 48 millimeters, uh, that's uh, 18 millimeters longer than the standard nursing catheter, which is uh, 30 millimeters. And the reason you need the long catheter is because you're going after fairly deep veins, 
and the short catheters are simply not going to reach. Now if you're right-handed, you want to attempt doing this on the patient's left arm. That way you can put the machine straight in front of you and everything is uh, a little bit more natural feeling. If you're forced to use the other arm, then you end up having to look over your shoulder at the machine, and this is much more uncomfortable than it appears on this picture here. Of course, if you're left-handed, then you'd want to try for the patient's right arm. Now, you're going to put a tegaderm directly over the probe. That uh, makes sure that you have a clean working surface on the probe. It also protects the probe from the bodily fluids, that is the blood that usually comes out when you do this procedure. Uh, don't attempt to put gel on the probe first because you'll never make that tegaderm stick. You uh, apply the tourniquet. You want to prep out that site and apply sterile gel. Now, strictly speaking, this is not a sterile procedure, but you're going to be plunging that needle directly through the gel into the blood vessels. You want it to be as clean as possible. Now, this is a very important point here. You need to make sure the probe marker is oriented to your left. That makes sure that what you see on screen has the same left-right orientation as the real world. You want to locate the vessel with your probe. You want to compress it to make sure it's a vein, and then survey that vein. And what I mean is run up and down the arm and see where that vein goes. You want to know where it's the biggest and most shallow, and that's how you pick your target. This is an example of a basilic vein. You can see it starts very small. It uh, goes from side to side and then goes uh, pretty big. So you definitely would want to choose a good spot to try and hit that vein. Once you've found your uh, entry point, you want to make sure that vein is centered on screen, and then you put the needle down at the center of the probe. That will roughly line it up with your blood vessel. Go ahead and insert the needle into the skin and then chase it with chase the probe with that needle. Now this is really important. Watch the ultrasound screen. Don't look at your hands. There's a natural tendency to look down at your hands while you do this uh, because that's how you put in IVs into peripheral veins that you can see and feel. But this is not one of those situations. Everything you need to know is up on screen, so keep your eyes up on that screen. You want to make sure you see that needle go into the vein, and then you look and see if there's a flash. And then you want to reconfirm that you're in by scanning past the tip. And I'll explain that more in a moment. After you're in, you put the probe down, thread that catheter, attach your extension tubing, draw your blood, flush that catheter, and then you need to wipe off that gel because you'll want to make sure to secure that catheter really well after you've done all of that work to get it in. And please remember to clean up after yourself. Get some of those um, antiseptic wipes and wipe that down really well. You don't want to leave that for the next person to have to clean up. So one of the major pitfalls is you get a blood flash, but you can't advance the catheter, or you advance the catheter, but no blood comes out. What happened here is that you relied on the flash to tell you that you're in, and you ended up overshooting the vein. These needles that you're using are quite long, and it takes one to three seconds for the flash to make it up the needle. And during that time, you're still advancing the needle in, and uh, you might overshoot in that time. The other thing is if you uh, just graze the vein and you cause a hematoma, that will also give you a flash, even though you're not really in. So again, in these long needles, don't rely on the flash to tell you that you're in, because it's not necessarily reliable. What you want to use is your ultrasound to tell you that you're in because you see the needle in the vessel. Then you look for the flash. And finally, to really be sure that you're in, you want to scan past the needle tip to make sure that you haven't overshot. So this is a needle that's in a blood vessel. And you scan past it, you see that the needle disappears. That's how you know the needle terminated in the blood vessel. In contrast, here's a needle that looks to be in, but when you scan past it, you see that the tip actually terminates in the tissue deep to the vein. Now, all is not lost if this happens. All you have to do is pull that needle back out and follow it with the probe until it's in, and you scan past it to make sure that it terminates inside that vein. Now, if you unfortunately cause a hematoma, that is going to compress your blood vessel and make it disappear. So you're going to have to pull the needle out entirely and start at a more proximal site. 
So one tip is always to start as distal as possible so that you can redo it more proximal. If you blow the vein proximal, you're not going to be able to go distally to it. A second uh, pitfall is that you put in the catheter, you collect the blood, everything looks good, you walk away, but 10 minutes later the nurse tells you that the IV is infiltrated. The cause of this is that you didn't put enough catheter into the vein. These catheters run very close to the biceps muscle, so any kind of movement of the, the patient's arm can cause it to decannulate. The other thing is when you infuse fluid through the catheter, it tends to push the back wall of the vein away from the catheter, and that can also cause it to decannulate. You want to make sure to reach the vein with at least two centimeters of catheter left. So when you see the IV in the vein on the ultrasound machine and you look down for the flesh, look and see how much catheter you have left. If you have less than two centimeters, there's a high likelihood that it's going to decannulate. So you might as well just take that catheter out and try it again at a steeper angle. As a correlate to that, don't attempt to cannulate veins that are more than two centimeters deep. So even with the really long catheters, if your vein is two centimeters deep, you go in at a 45 degree angle, which is pretty steep, you're going to have about two centimeters left of that catheter to thread in there. If you're using one of those nursing catheters, you'll see that you only have two millimeters left, and for sure that one's going to blow. Even in a vein that's only one centimeter deep, if you use the nursing catheter, you're going to only have a little over a centimeter and a half of vein left, and you may or may not get away with that. So always, always find those long catheters and use them. All right, here's a video clip of an actual uh, IV placement. And what you notice with this video compared to the phantom uh, videos is that there's a lot of echogenic soft tissue planes and fascia in there that make it very hard to see the needle. And that's just the uh, way it is. You, you, there's no way around that. You have to work with it. Now, if you have a hard time visualizing the needle, give it a little back and forth wiggle the movement will sort of tell you where that needle is. Now remember you move the needle back and forth, not side to side, because if you move it side to side, you're going to be slashing through a lot of tissue. You don't want to do that. Let's talk about central vein access. So the central veins uh, that are uh, cannulized are the internal jugular, the subclavian, and the femoral. I'm going to talk mostly about the internal jugular because that's the one that's the most popular and the one that's most amenable to uh, ultrasound guidance. Here's the uh, internal jugular and uh, I'm having this patient do a Valsalva maneuver just to demonstrate how distensible it is. Now with central veins you can either do a transverse or longitudinal and you're going to choose based on surface anatomy how much of a uh, how long or how short the patient's neck is in other words uh, you also choose based on how tortuous the vessel is, uh, how close, you know, uh, structures to be avoided are going to be, and also, finally, your comfort with a particular approach. Now, if you're going to do it in longitudinal, the most important thing is to make sure you're going for the vein and not the artery. This sounds really obvious, but in longitudinal, the artery and the veins look exactly alike. The best way to do this is to identify the vein in transverse and then rotate the probe. All right, so here's a video clip of the vein and artery and transverse, and it's really easy to tell the IJ apart from the carotid. The carotid is a high-pressure vessel, and so it's uh, mostly round compared to the internal jugular, which is lower pressure and not round. In longitudinal, however, they look very much alike. Note that they both pulsate. So the safest way to make sure you're shooting for the IJ is to find it in transverse and then rotate your probe, keeping it on screen, and that way you know you're going for the right vessel. Now the other major pitfall in doing a longitudinal approach is malalignment of the needle, the vein, and the ultrasound beam. If the needle falls out of the ultrasound plane, then you're going to have a hard time hitting that vein. And it's hard to know when that's happening. The best way to ensure that you're on target is to make sure you see the needle very clearly. If it starts to look 
ghostly, then it's probably falling out of the plane of the ultrasound beam. If it stops moving altogether, even though you're moving the needle, then it's completely out of plane. So here's a uh, longitudinal approach, and you can see the needle very clearly. It's going down and going straight into that vein. And if you rotate the probe uh, into transverse, you can see it's made it in dead center. Here's another example of a longitudinal placement. And you can kind of make out the needle, but it appears a bit faint. Here it kind of looks like it's in. But you rotate the probe and you find it's actually passed off to the side of that blood vessel. And if you've got a big high-pressure pulsatile vein, uh, artery sitting next to it, well, that's going to be a bad day. Just as a hint, if you're left-handed, you want to orient the probe towards you in longitudinal and insert the needle on that side. If you're right-handed, you want to orient the probe marker away from you and insert the needle on the opposite side of the marker. The reason for that is on screen, you'll see the needle coming in either from the left or the right, and that'll just make more sense to you uh, as a right-hander or left-hander. You want to place that machine such that the person doing the procedure has uh, only to look up. You need a sterile probe sleeve. Uh, you need to cover the probe as well as the cord because this is a sterile procedure. Uh, you need sterile gel and, of course, your central line kit. Now, the approach for doing a central catheterization is exactly the same as doing it blind, but you use ultrasound during the initial venipuncture. The principles are exactly the same as doing peripheral access. So before you prep everything out, you want to take a look at what you're shooting for. So locate the vein. Uh, use a very light touch because it's very easy to collapse the IJ. Decide if that site is appropriate. And at this point, you want to gain, uh, adjust your gain and depth. Then you prep out the insertion site. You put your gown and gloves on. You have an assistant put some non-sterile gel on the probe, and that assistant then is going to hold up the probe while you put the probe cover over it. The assistant is going to uh, extend the probe cover along the cord, and then you're going to secure the probe cover, making sure that there's no air bubbles underneath that cover, and then you're going to apply sterile gel on top of that. You're going to revisualize the vein sterilely, and then you're going to infiltrate your lidocaine using real-time ultrasound guidance. And then finally, you're going to insert the guide wire introducer into the vein with real-time ultrasound guidance. Once you think you're in, you want to make sure you're in. And you want to sweep the probe. If you're in transverse, sweep it past the needle tip. Make sure it's in there. If you're in longitudinal, sweep it from side to side and confirm that the needle is not lateral to the vein. As an added measure, you want to rotate the probe to the opposite uh, orientation to reconfirm that you are in the right vessel. Because the next step you're about to do is to dilate that vessel. And the last thing you want to do is dilate an artery. All right, once you know that you're in, you can put the probe down, insert your guide wire, and go ahead and proceed with the procedure as you would have done blindly. This video clip shows a central vein being catheterized. Uh, this is transverse because personally I prefer the transverse. And one thing to note about this is how large that vein is. It's very, very easy to do this procedure with ultrasound guidance because those vessels are just so big. So in summary, for peripheral veins, you pretty much have to use the transverse approach. Remember, you have to chase the probe with the needle so that you don't fall behind it. Uh, you have to make sure the catheter is in by seeing it in the vessel. Then you look for the flash, and finally you want to scan beyond the needle tip to make sure that it terminates inside the vessel. And finally, make sure you're putting at least two centimeters of catheter into that vein. For central veins, you can either go transverse or longitudinal. When you go longitudinal, make sure that you're going for the vein. Make sure you see the needle very clearly, and if you don't see the needle moving, then it's out of plane and you have to readjust. And finally, check placement with the opposite probe orientation as uh, to confirm that you're in. So I hope that was helpful. It takes a bit of practice, uh, and I hope you'll be off to a good start with this lecture. Thanks.